Yo, what it is, it's your boy Comedian J. Can, straight out of Acres Home, right here on the Donnie Houston Podcast. Man, make sure y'all check out my episode. It's uh not hilarious, but it's informative. Again, man, it's your boy J. Can. Shout out to my boy Donnie Houston, man. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, man, it's going down. It's Donnie Houston Podcast. I am Donnie Houston. Check it out, man. Uh, we got a special guest, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he's been putting it down, man, in the comedy world. It's actually the second time here. First time he came, uh, you saw him on here with Smackwater. You know what I'm saying? Now we got him here. You know, he's getting ready to go on tour. Uh, he's around here doing his thing, like I say, man. Uh, killing it on the comedy circuit, man. In the in the city, out the city, around the country. J. Kane, what's going down, man? What's up, bro? What's going on with you? Man? My dog right there. Jilly, baby. What's the deal, baby? Second time on the show. The first time was uh, a bit wild, to say the least. Yeah, one yeah, of the mo yeah. uh the more controversial little, episodes. Little I think you had. Your side, yeah. I mean, anytime I have smack, it we you know it, it kind of goes. You know, I have people texting me talking about that's how you feel. I'm like, no, that's how smack feels. <laughs> <laughs> smack got a mind of his own. <laughs> that yeah. don't have nothing to do with yeah. me. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was fun though. I'm glad I'm back. Yeah, nah, for sure, man. What's going? The boys got a tour kicking off, man. Yeah, kicking off my first headliner tour. Uh, I've been on tour a few times, but as a host or a feature, but nah, this is my tour. I'm, I'm headlining all the dates and everything and taking my boy Shabazz Playtime. Hmm. I just signed with an agent, so it's uh, it's looking good. That's what's up. So how far y'all going out? Why y'all going out? To? Uh, we started in New Orleans next Saturday. New Orleans, Detroit, Atlanta, uh, Dallas, Austin, New York. We're going hmm. out to New York, too. So it's a bunch of dates. We still lining up dates. I'm still in talks with Columbus, Ohio, and so yeah. You ever you ever linked up with Ken Boyd before? You know who yeah, Ken Boyd is? Yeah, yeah, my boy. yeah, yeah me and Ken tight. Yeah, that's my boy. Yeah, it's a big dog, man. Yeah, Ken. Yeah, Ken. I seen that boy, Ken. Man, that nigga. Yeah, he worked for that shit. Dog. He was in a uh, Godfather of Harlem. Yeah, that's yeah. a big move right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah Ken Boyd. Houston. Shout out Ken, man. That's my boy, man. He been on here before. Uh, but anyway, this ain't about Ken. This is about you, man. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Man. Got the tour kicking off. Comedy, bro. Talk about comedy in Houston, bro. How how is that being a comedian in Houston? Underrated. Hmm. We don't get the respect we deserve out here in Houston, especially like a lot of cities, Chicago, uh, Atlanta, L.A. They get their comics uh, the praise. They get the big gigs. They you know they get the movie roles and stuff. They in the cities they can do that. Do you, that's what I say. They also have the market for yeah, that too. Yeah, they right? have the market for it, right? In Houston, we got to travel to those markets and get it. Like you look at somebody like Billy Sorrells, who was an outstanding comic straight out of Houston, but they ain't respect him until he went to L.A. and started popping with all Def Digital. But uh, Houston comics, when we travel to those other cities, we show like uh, we the best. We really the the ones that going we stage killers as they call it. Like we go on any stage, kill a stage, and then the people that surround like, man, where you from? Well, I'm from Houston. I'm like, oh, I ain't even know that. Like, yeah. yeah. Everybody from Houston. Everybody from Houston. No oh, shit. So why why do you, why do you think that is though? It's just the market that we in, man. I mean, and, and what's, the, about what's the what's the resolution to that? Because that's been the narrative for like comedy. I mean, even, it's like, I mean, all entertainment. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. music is already hard, but people have kind of figured out how to make music. I mean, work what's for the resolution? Here, comedy is for us as entertainment at the, at the city. Hmm. Like when you get past uh, certain artists, it's like what else? Well, mm -hmm. I'm asking from a from a standpoint. I'm saying like, man. You know, I've experienced this. Like, if this would have happened for me here, then yeah. maybe such. Have you had things like that, or is it just really more of a lack of resources type of thing? Uh, I don't know, man. Cause I, I I've been able to maneuver through it a little bit because I have a lot of resources, a lot of uh connections to a lot of other cities, to where I can put myself in position to win. You know, uh, cause you haven't. You, I, that's just, one thing I can say about you, you haven't necessarily focused on staying in Houston. Yeah, and you man. one of the ones that hit the road and said, "Man, I'm gonna just go out." Cause I gotta show them. Yeah, I'm the one of the ones that that actually go out and show them. Like I'm from. I'm every time you see me on stage, I always say Acres Home, cause they don't know where Acres Home. Man, if you in Columbus, Ohio, you ain't never heard of Acres Home. I'm gonna tell them what the hood is. Tell them I'm from Houston, and we gonna be good too. That's mm. the main thing. It's like I can claim I'm from Houston all day, but if I'm on stage and I'm not good, then it's like oh, whatever. Hmm. But then uh, I'll I give you a perfect ex example. So I moved to L.A. for a little bit just to, you know, try to get my feet 
wedding, different market and everything, start popping out there. And I'm sitting at the Hollywood Improv, and uh, I had did the Hollywood Monday raise a few times, killed it, had some of my boys come through, get on stage and kill it. So this particular day, Blame the Comic was on stage, and Blame killing, going hard. And one of the producers of the show, I was sitting next to, and she looked at me, she's like, uh, Jay Cannon, is everybody from Houston this funny? Because everybody you brought through is funny. And I was like, yeah. Like, y'all don't know. She's like, nah, we never think of Houston when we think of comedy. All we think about is Ali Sadiq, and that's where it stopped. I'm like, nah, that's that's cold-blooded, because we got some, some killers out here, man. Hmm, boys just ain't moving around with it. Yeah, they just, I mean. How, how, how do you go about when you're going, like, Say, well, shit, well, I'm going to just take a trip to L.A. or whatever. Like, what's the talk about that process of, like, being able to break into those other markets? Man, you got to not be afraid. Like, not be afraid to go up to them spots, introduce yourself, talk to the comics. Because a lot of the times when you go to these other places, the comics run some of these comedy clubs or they can get you into these comedy clubs. Befriend some of these comics that's out of state. That's what I did in New Orleans. That's why I can go to New Orleans every year on Memorial Weekend and do two shows at the uh, comedy club out there because I'm cool with the comics in the city. They respect it. And uh, I think a lot of comics in Houston need to trust their process. They just think, oh, I'm going to just go to the hood open mics or I'm going to just get on at this little stage and then somebody going to come in there and see me and take me on the road. And That's, not gonna like that. yeah. <laughs> That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. The only way you're going to be seen is if you go out to these other places. I was literally spending... I was a substitute teacher. I would substitute Monday through Thursday, take my little check, and go and travel Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or sometimes stay through Monday and just do their rooms and meet the comics and get on stage. And then it got to the point where I ain't got to do that no more. I'm, I'm, I'm known in they city because, oh, that's Jay Ken. That's the homie. You know, I, I, so you would substitute for three days out the week? Three, three to four days out the week, yeah. No shit. Take that bread and say, I'm finna go. Yep. Yep. No shit. <laughs> That's what I had to do, man. Cause it, how long How long were you in that process? The substitute teaching yeah. and stuff? <sighs> Years, bro. I was a before and after school program manager, <laughs> you know? Just using whatever money I could make at the school because, you know, they was paying pretty well. And they allow you to have yeah. time off and to do your shit. Yeah, you know? and the... Jobs I had, they had me. They gave me time to sit at the school and write my jokes. You know, so I was working on my craft while at the schools, and then taking the money and just traveling to go get on them stages. Man, I just wasn't taking no for an answer. Hmm. You so know? when did you, when did you start take, going on the comedy journey? When I started comedy, or when you, when, when you would you say like, all right, now I'm officially in grind mode with this shit, and I can say no, I was, wasn't going back to work with COVID. When COVID hit, the school. No, no, no. I'm not saying when. It, no, I'm not saying when it was. I'm saying like when you said I'm gonna take it serious. Take it serious. And you started going through the process of like I'm gonna be consistent showing up. I'm gonna start doing. You know what I mean? Like from I that think time. For me, it started from day one, mm -hmm. from the first time I went to the open mic, and that's crazy. We went to the open mic at Carol's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was my first time ever doing comedy. Wait, what year is this? This is uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. 2016. Yeah, Carol's. And uh, I was, you know, I was already in the clubs and stuff, being a club promoter, MC. So I kind of had already a, a, like a... Knew some of the people. Yeah, knew yeah, some the people. Had like shit. a little fan base going. Knew how to conduct myself on the microphone. But when I took it serious, when I went to Carol's, did the open mic, got off the stage, and I looked at my boy Bass, and I was like, it's it. Hmm. They said, I stopped emceeing. I stopped promoting. I stopped doing all of it and just solely focus on stand-up comedy. I went about stand-up comedy books, the comedy Bible. I taught myself how to write different versions of jokes, like Saturday Night Live got a different style. They mm -hmm. write their jokes. Mm -hmm. Taught myself that hours and hours of research because I knew the feeling I had on that stage, I wasn't going to get that nowhere else. That was going to be a different type of feeling. And so I just went... All in, man. I went mm. all in. I, was, I don't know so how from most 2016 and 2020 next year, yeah, like, all right, nah, this, nah, we in here. We in here. We in. That was it. It was. I wasn't. I didn't want to do nothing else but stand up comedy. Hmm. And so the yeah. pandemic came. The substituting stopped. School shut down. That's why I looked. But that's when you, you, was, you was doing shows in your crib. Is that, when, is that around yeah. that time? Yeah. 
I so I started doing shows in the crib. That's what another thing that took my name from here to another. Cause they was like, who is this kid doing comedy shows at his house in the middle of COVID? Me, I had to figure it out. I, I just, everybody else shut down. But for me, I have to be on stage. I have to be on, I have to express my, my thoughts, my, you know, that's my therapy. And so with COVID, it's like I'm sitting in the house and I'm going crazy with all these thoughts. I'm writing them down, but I can't tell them to nobody. I'm calling people like, hey, listen to this joke. Like, man, we don't want to listen to that shit. I'm like, ah. So it started when I had, uh, my birthday came around. And so I had like, couldn't go nowhere. So everybody came to the house for the birthday. And I had a DJ and the microphone. So all the comics came and everybody was taking the mic. And doing just a bit. Doing the just doing them, so I'm sitting there looking like, mm, okay, this 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 could be something. It's just sport. So when everybody left, uh, my boy Lamar was with me, and I'm like, hey, bro, I got this idea. We start instead of me trying to figure out how I can do shows at places that you know they badly open up. Let's just bring everybody right back here every month. So we rented a stage the first month, and I think like 30 people showed up, which is good for the house, Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, some spots don't have 30 people. But, right, some spots don't have 30 people. Yeah. The next month, we said we ain't renting no stage. We went, I got the video on my phone. We built the stage by hand. Went to Home Depot, got the wood, got everything, built the stage. The next show had 50 people. Hmm. So I'm like, okay. By the time we stopped doing it, I had to like shut it off. It was like, I think we counted 125 people in my house. Every month I'm talking, Netflix is a joke, came to film, I'm having- No shit. Yeah, man, it was up. It was up. I'm telling you, I had people coming in from out of town because they couldn't perform nowhere. So they was coming now to my gotta, house- you got a platform, yeah. To perform. Like my boy David Lucas came, he from LA. Uh, Compton Menace came, DJ Chose came. It was, it was like a, a time period where it was just like, it's all we can do. Can't go to the clubs, can't go to the improv, we can't go movie theaters. We need some kind of entertainment, some form of entertainment. And uh, COVID helped me provide that at the crib. Thank God I had a large enough space to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Okay, so you come out of COVID and then what? Well, is that that's when you moved to LA, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you got out there. You was, was in like some rap videos or some shit. I seen. You. Yeah, I did the uh, crazy story. So this how LA worked. That's why I tell people to just, you know, just go and visit. You don't have to live there, but just try to go and network. So I was back and forth from L.A. I, have, I got a lot of homies. Even before I even stepped foot in the land, I had already had homies that was out there. So I went and took a trip out there and did like a, a photo shoot with uh, Dominique Draper, who was Tony Draper's son. Yeah, Draper, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Draper like this. That's I my mean, dog. So I when mean. he was in Houston, we were doing a lot of short films. He was actually the first person I told I was going to do stand-up comedy. Hmm. And uh, we did a photo shoot because we both in L.A. at the same time at one of the visual art studios that his homeboy uh, on Video Guard. And uh, Video Guard is the guy who did Young Dolph videos, all Dolph early videos and stuff. So I'm walking down the street of L.A., Video Guard standing across the street. And he's like, hey, uh, Jay Ken, I'm new. I just moved out there. I'm like, who know me right here? Yeah. Screaming downtown, Jay Ken. So I see him all, what's up? So we chopping it up. He's like, hey, I'm filming something tomorrow. You mind having your hair out? Because it's like a Tales from the Hood type thing. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I got you. Uh, I do it. The next day, I show up, and uh, come to find out, it's a music video for Wiz Khalifa and Juicy J. Hmm. So I'm like, oh, it's LA crazy. So from that, somebody seen me in the video, and then I got a phone call from that about doing uh, the Babyface Ray and Pusha T video. So I did that video. So I'm like, oh, now nah, I'm a video vixen. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be no video vixen. I gotta. It's cool, but it's still good for to get the face yeah. out there. And oh yeah, yeah, it was it was cool. Uh, Wiz Khalifa now and Juicy J. Like if you go to their uh, YouTube on the song, I'm the thumbnail. Like my hmm. face is the thumbnail, so that's cool. Uh, I had another, I had other video opportunities, but I, just with my uh, association the other stuff, I couldn't, I couldn't do them. Yeah. You know, like I don't. Want, well, 
We on Donnie Houston, man. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, shit. Yes. Yeah. I've uh, I walked off YG music video set. No shit. Yeah. Why you walk off of shit? Cause my alliance is to my homies, oh, man. Niggas was, niggas was they tripping or what? Now nah, they weren't tripping. It's Cause just, you know you go if you go into YG, you already know what time it is. Yeah. It was uh, just a lot going on at the time, and you know I'm really, really, really close with Compton Menace, and uh, him and YG don't see eye to eye. Hmm. And so that was just a conflict of interest. So you supposed to be in the YG video and you walked out? Mm -hmm. No shit. Mm -hmm. So how that ended up working out? They made me sign some waiver that I couldn't talk about it until uh, until it came out. Yeah, shit. it's the video with him and J Cole. No shit. Yeah. So what you supposed to be doing? I don't know. I ain't stay long enough to find that. <laughs> okay, so what was the reason though? Because you knew it was a YG video. No, you, you know. So it was no, 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 no. So beforehand, uh, the producer calls me or the director, and uh, they send a text like, "Hey, uh, we want you for this music." They don't tell you the artist first. Some sometimes so they just the question was, "Or uh, do you have any gang affiliations that can prevent you from doing a video?" So I asked her, like, what's the colors? She was like, oh, red, black, and gray. That's the wardrobe you need to bring. I said, yeah, I'm good. You know, I can, I can wear that, whatever. So when I get to the set, the wardrobe is there. So I'm looking at the wardrobe. He, he not there yet. I'm looking at the wardrobe, and I see, like, dress shoes, dress pants, you know, the red bandanas and stuff. So I'm like, it's only one person that I know dressed like this. You know what I'm saying? And so... I'd start asking the people, like, hey, y'all know what video we on? And nobody knew until the um, choreographer came. And then she like, yeah, uh, it's YG's music video said he wants y'all to do this and this. I'm sitting there thinking, like, I could do it. But is it worth, like, friendships that uh, people that's been there for me since day one or whatnot? It's like, uh, it ain't worth it. You know what I'm saying? The money not worth the conflict of it, you know what I mean? Mm. So I was just like, oh, I'm not doing it. Then they wanted you to have your shirt off. It was stupid cold out there. I'm like, yeah, nah, this ain't for me. Yeah, yeah. So, Damn, okay, shit, well, yeah, shit. That's an exclusive story right there, man, true story. Yeah, uh, okay, I, ain't, I wasn't expecting <laughs> it, dog. I wasn't expecting that man with shit. What? Yeah, I got, I'll tell you some more stuff Go off ahead. camera. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Man, so, you got uh you got any aspirations? You were saying you know we're taking all these classes and stuff. You got aspirations for more acting and like all that mm -hmm. type of stuff. Yeah, I'm uh I'm doing a play. I'm in a play on June fourth with uh Kevo the artist. Kevo cast me for a play. We worked together before. Uh, I got a couple feature films in the works that I should be a part of. That's gonna be pretty cool. Hmm. Uh, Tubi movies, of course. That's what I'm saying. You talking about you on Big <laughs> Screen or we on Tubi? But yeah, we way, on I mean, Tubi. We on, if you Tubi. on Tubi. You might as well be on Big Screen because everybody watch this yeah, shit. Yeah, everybody on Tubi. Yeah. Nah. Uh, yeah, man. I got a, it's a lot of projects that's just been thrown my way, and uh, I'm just I'm grateful, bro. I'm grateful. I work hard at it, and I'm trying to get better at every aspect of, it, especially with acting, because acting not something that just you can just turn turn on and turn off. It's like you gotta be tuned in. Yeah, you gotta be, you gotta know your lines. You gotta not even just know your lines, but know understand the understand characters and yeah. all that shit. Yeah, yeah. The backstory and everything. I, I'm uh, in a feature film right now that we filming where I play like the work husband. Hmm. <laughs> so I kind of like my hair in the man bun and all that. And I hate the man bun too. Bro. Yeah. I was like, man, that's gay. But it's for the road. You know it's for the road, man. So it's cool. I'm getting a lot of roles right now. And so I got a, I don't know if I could talk about that one yet, because I just got that call yesterday. So we'll wait. We'll see. Mm. Are you still, how often do you uh, work on comedy these days? I know you said when you first started out, like you were really tuned in, like just going super hard every day. Every day, bro. Mm. Every day. That's one thing that's like, because I really love it. I really love the art of being a stand-up comedian. A lot of comics, I'm not going to say a lot of comics, but some comics are forced into becoming a stand-up comedian. Like, they'll be booming on Instagram and they'll go viral and they stuff and just keep going And you got to come back to, like, that, to the basic, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then people want to see them. So then they be like, oh, well, I got to go on tour and figure out how to become a stand-up comic. I became a stand-up comic, like, first. And so 
I know that's the basis of everything I'm doing right now. So I cannot forget stand-up comedy at no point in my life. I was asked if I got a major role on a movie, would I stop doing stand-up? Or how much would it cost me to stop doing it? And I said, I wouldn't take the money. I don't want to ever stop doing stand-up. That's the only part of me that's where I feel at peace sometimes, you know? Mm. Just being on stage, making people laugh is peaceful. Yeah, uh, yeah, man. Well, shit, dog. Uh, fucking got a tour <laughs> kicking off. Yeah. Uh, social media, you want to get it off before we uh, close up? Yeah, man. Social media, I don't know what camera I'm looking at. I'm looking at all of them. Are we right here? The Real J Can on Instagram. The Real J Can. T H E R E A L J C A N N. Straight out of Acres Home, man. We made it to Donnie Houston Podcast. I've been trying to get on this dude podcast for a long, long, long time. And I want to. Technically, you've been on here before. Yeah, I've been on here before, but I ain't say too much the last time. <laughs> I ain't want to jinx my career. Cause uh, I still got a a nice low image to uphold. Smackwater don't care. He don't care about too much of nothing. <laughs> I care. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, man. Hey, man, it's Jay Ken, it's Donnie East Podcast. We're about here. Appreciate you. Oh, yeah. Donnie Houston. Subscribe to the Donnie Houston Podcast, man.